हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज शेफ दिदार सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर चितकारा स्कूल ऑफ हॉस्पिटैलिटी टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द रेजिंग एजेंट्स सम इंग्रेडिएंट्स प्ले अ वेरी वाइटल रोल इन बेकिंग रेजिंग एजेंट्स आर दोज इंग्रेडिएंट्स व्हिच आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द केमिकल चेंजेस इन बेकिंग दे आर ऑल्सो नोन एज लीवनिंग एजेंट्स सम ऑफ दीज आर अवेलेबल नेचुरली such as yeast whereas some of these are produced by chemicals such as baking soda or the baking powder they are added to the batters and the doughs to help them rise the action of moisture heat or acidity or even the combination of the three triggers a reaction with the raising agent to produce carbon dioxide gas which becomes trapped as it bubbles through the dough when you put the particular product for cooking or when the dough cooks the bubble becomes set in the mixture as the protein in the flour coagulates upon coming in contact with the heat thus giving breads and cakes a soft sponge like texture the main key points of raising agents are Raising agents include anything that causes rising within foods and are usually used in baked goods. Raising agents are added to the baked product during the preparation stage. They create gas, air or steam which expands when heated and causes the food to rise. When heated, the gas that is trapped within the product expands. This is because heating causes the molecules in the air to move more rapidly and apply more force. This rising results in a light airy texture within the foods. Examples of mixtures that require aeration are cakes, breads, batters, pastries, meringues, souffles. There are different types of raising agents that can be used. Raising agents are classified into various categories which includes the mechanical, chemical and biological. Different foods may use one or more of these to achieve a desirable end product. Now let's discuss about the mechanical raising agents. As we know air is a commonly used and effective raising agent. it can be added to a mixture in a variety of ways such as sieving flour or lifting flour when rubbing in fat example if we are making pastry scones or cakes creaming fat and sugar to incorporate air example creamed cake mixture or while whisking to trap air example can be of eggs whisked to create a foam for sponge cakes meringues souffles even the beating of ingredients together helps to trap air the example can be of beating the eggs into a creamed mixture last but not the least rolling and folding pastry that is creating laminations this also traps air the example can be of flaky pastry rough puff pastry we all know what steam is but we might not know that steam is a common physical raising agent it is produced from the liquids example water milk even eggs that are added to the mixtures or from water contained in a solid component example can be of the butter examples of recipes which use steam as a raising agents are the batters example if we are making yorkshire pudding and shoe pastry shoe pastry totally depends on steam as a raising agent or to give volume to the product they require a high oven temperature to produce the steam to raise the mixture this produces a light open texture with large pockets of air left after the steam has escaped steam also works with air and carbon dioxide in cakes and breads as well as 
with air in pastry to help increase their volume after discussing the mechanical raising agents let's now discuss the chemical raising agents chemical raising agents are those that require a chemical reaction in order to function common examples of chemical raising agents include baking soda that is also known as bicarbonate of soda baking powder that is the combination of bicarbonate of soda plus cream of tartar and self raising flour while talking about baking powder baking powder is used as a raising agent for a number of doughs and batters such as cakes puddings and biscuits baking powder is made from a combination of alkaline and acid substances the composi composition of baking powder is usually of cream of tartar and bicarbonate of soda which react when they come in contact with the moisture and warmth to produce carbon dioxide gas in the form of small bubbles baking powder is usually a single acting agent which means it reacts as soon as it comes in contact with any liquid hence it is extremely important to work quickly once milk or water comes in contact with the dry ingredients so that the resulting carbon dioxide gas does not get a chance to escape while talking about bicarbonate of soda or the baking soda which is used in a variety of dishes such as biscuits batters puddings etc as mentioned earlier it can be mixed with cream of tartar to produce baking powder it usually reacts in the presence of any acidic medium such as sour milk buttermilk or orange juice which causes carbon dioxide gas to release causing the desired result in baked goods now talking about self raising flour it is a flour that already contains baking powder and therefore only requires water to be activated let's now talk about biological raising agents yeast is a biological raising agent it is a single cell fungus that feeds on simple sugars to produce carbon dioxide gas and alcohol it is used as a leavening agent to produce a wide range of bakery products the yeast that is used in the bakery or the for the baked products is known as the baker's yeast it helps in leavening the baked products and the breads the various types of baker's yeast are fresh yeast dry yeast and easy blend yeast given the right condition namely the warmth carbohydrates and moisture yeast converts sugar to alcohol and carbon dioxide this conversion process is usually known as fermentation the carbon dioxide gas in the bread dough will expand when placed in a hot oven steam is also produced to help raise the dough while talking about biological raising agents there are various conditions that affect yeast fermentation and that are the temperature the moisture and the food the best temperature range for yeast is between 25 degrees celsius to 35 degrees celsius if the temperature is too high the yeast cells are destroyed if too low the action is slowed in moisture this is provided by the liquid in the dough this should be at the correct temperature and when we talking about the food this is supplied by the starch in the flour there are various other ingredients that can also affect the action of the yeast that are salt fat and sugar the using of salt excess will slow the action of the yeast by drawing the water out of the cells and destroying them while using fat a high fat content will slow the action of the yeast rich doughs or rich dough recipes often have a higher proportions 
of yeast to flour in sugar or while using sugar normally adding sugar will speed up the yeast growth but large excesses of sugar can bind water and actually inhibit yeast growth let's now talk about the combination or the combining of the raising agents the different types of raising agents are sometimes used together to aerate a mixture a creamed cake mixture is a good example this uses the mechanical force or the mechanical raising agents the physical raising agents and the chemical raising agents while using a mechanical raising agent air is added by sieving the flour creaming the fat and sugar and beating in the eggs in while talking about the physical or the biological or let's say the talking about the steam steam is formed from the liquids during cooking now talking about the chemical one carbon dioxide is released from the baking powder or self raising flour when the liquid is added and during cooking let's now summarize on how raising agents work the appropriate raising agent is added to the mixture and evenly distributed when it is heated one or more of the following will take place number 1 air will expand number 2 steam is produced from liquids and enlarges the air cells the steam escapes and is replaced by air number 3 carbon dioxide is produced when moisture and heat acts on baking powder the carbon dioxide enlarges the air cells and aerates the mixture the gases expand when they are heated number 4 carbon dioxide produced by yeast cells expands due to the heat of the oven let me share some additional information on how raising agents work gluten in flour allows mixture to stretch as the reaction takes place mixtures must rise before the protein in the flour or the egg coagulates during the pro- cooking process when coagulation takes place the mixtures sets in its rise and shape most importantly the type of raising agent used will affect the final texture and appearance of the dish the word evening in the baking trade is used to describe the source of gas that makes a dough or batter expands in the presence of moisture and heat leavening agents are available in different forms from yeast the organic leavener to chemical mechanical and physical leaveners bakers choose the appropriate type of leavening based on the product they are making thank you for listening